Good morning. Thank you for coming. I'd like to especially thank those that came for the work day yesterday. I uh, really appreciate the, uh, the, the work that uh, occurs. On a selfish level, it means I've got a bit less to do, or at least it pr postpones it for a while. And um, on a deeper level, it's another level of practice which is very important because uh, taking one's practice into everyday life, uh, you know, is taking one's practice into the daily life. It means all activities are included in it. Uh, to illustrate this, I wanted to uh, bring up a uh, koan from the, um, let's see, what's it called? The Mumon Khan or the Gateless Gate. It's called uh, Kicking Over the walk Water Jug, Case 40. The case when Master Isan was under Hyakujo, he held the position of Tenzo. Hyakujo wanted to choose a master for Mount Tai. Tai. Uh, he called the monk, uh, he called the head monk and the rest of his disciples together to have them present their views and said the outstanding person should be sent. Then he took a water jug, put it on the floor and said, you may not call this a water jug, what will you call it? Uh, the head monk said, it can't be called a wooden sandal. Hyakujo then asked Isan. Isan immediately kicked over the water jug and left. Hyakujo laughed and said, first monk, you have been defeated by Isan. So he ordered Isan to found the new monastery. <coughs> Mumon's commentary. Isan summoned up all his valor, but alas, he could not jump out of Hyakujo's trap. Upon examination, he favors the heavy and not the light. Why, look, though he removed his headband, he put on an iron yoke. The verse, tossing away the bamboo buckets and ladles, he makes a vigorous thrust and cuts off all hindrances. Uh, Yakujo's heavy barrier cannot interrupt his rush. Countless Buddhas come forth from his toes. All right. So anyway, uh, my my main thing with uh, doing uh, talks on koan is not actually to to talk about the koan because the spirit behind them is a bit more important. Um, here we're, we're we're talking about succession, um, which is an important thing for for any teacher. It's nice to have somebody to take take over, you know. I mean, it, it puts one aspect of your mind at rest because you know that it's going to be taken care of for future generations. It's like in a family, is, um, uh, once, once your kid grows up, um, there's a, uh, not that mine has grown up yet, but I raised, I raised one that went past 18 <laughs> and they, they left and ho hopefully now they're supporting themselves well. But it's, a, you know, it's, it's part of a, a natural process. Uh, some people just don't appreciate the fact of succession. You know, meditation is just a fact about making oneself at peace, um, enjoying maybe the sangha, which is you know it's fair comment. That's that's the way some people feel about it. That it does work, um, but on a deeper level, uh, the the process and the structures that you set up can really benefit society as a whole, and. Uh, you know, if you want proof of that kind of thing, very simple. You know, just go back to World War Two. Yamamoto Genpo Roshi advised the Prime Minister of Japan. Uh, Prime Minister of Japan said, "How you know? How can we get out of this? You know, we have to surrender to, or we we have to do something with the Americans, or they're going to bomb the crap out of us. You know, basically, there'll be more nuclear bombs, more people dead. If we fight, there's going to be millions killed. Uh, so what shall we do?" Yamamoto Genporo, she said to him, um, tell the emperor that um, the emperor has to be like the sun. In other words, untouched. You know, and we have to bear the unbearable. Those two, those two phrases allowed the Japanese to surrender and saved probably at least an estimated three million allied soldiers. Not to say uh, how many Japanese would be done. Practice works, how does it work? It works by being aware. That's the core of the practice. 
being aware not only of oneself but what of one's environment it doesn't mean just to turn in on oneself and uh, reflect in that way quite often the societal view of meditation is a very selfish thing people ask sometimes you know why do you spe spend so much time on looking into you know your own nature why don't you go off and do good works well the fact is that you know quite often the meditation is done before most people get up <laughs> in the morning and then the good works continue during the day you know I mean that isn't even an excuse it happens on all 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 levels in terms of uh, uh, activity there's 24 7 in terms of practice if you put the focus of practice or or benefiting others you can you can look at the mission statement of Buddhists or Zen Buddhists which is cease from evil do only good do good for others it's right there you know basically the whole of life is there if you step back a little bit I take refuge in in the Buddha I take refuge in awakening and living that awakened life not this is a bunch of old dead dudes that we take refuge in that's not so it's to take refuge in awakening I can do that too those guys did it I can do it second one I take refuge in the Dharma the teachings that come I take refuge or I live in the Dharma not that there is a Dharma outside of one's own daily life but I take refuge in the teachings that come on a momentary <laughs> basis whether I value them as good or bad simple as that the teachings are boundless and endless they are always coming in there's no lack of those things but it's where we position what is valid to us you know and I could elucidate you know in this case is a guy who's a cook it's a bit more than a cook it's more like uh, you know the, the head cook is taking care of say uh, you know a mili military installation <laughs> never ceases or uh, you know maybe the White House and all the dignitaries tremendous responsibility and that kind of thing what makes a person like that you know what makes a person really enter into something like that it stretches you that's what meditation's meant to do you know you may, you may sit on your cushion a lot of people immediately want to go towards peace Know, or experience peace some people give up because it's not there but the fact of what happens is when you first sit down and meditate the stuff that is in your head comes to the surface <laughs> it's a fact you don't go beyond that immediately that's what you have to look into you have to accept it as a starting point this, these are the ingredients of my life and then by seeing that you know I'm in various ways I don't have to generate those all the time to make myself a person I'm a person whether those things run or not also seeing that um, the self-reflection the self-creation that, that arises on a momentary basis uh, is also uh, not necessary on a momentary basis to allow oneself to be comes up to the surface and then the third thing is that then there's choice in the midst of what arises on a momentary basis to see how you you know go on with things